Holy smokes everyone, today we are doing a boots on the ground report. I'm outside of a car dealer right now, let that car go past. Um, and what I'm seeing, I think you can probably see in the background here, this is the storage, this is the overflow, and it's getting absolutely uh, flooded with inventory. So sometimes you can just look at the data, you can't just look at the charts. Sometimes just go to your, another car going past, one out the window here. Sometimes you just have to go to your local city or if you live in the city, get out there, go look what's happening in the retail sector. Uh, when I go into the city now, my local city, I go down the strip and I'm seeing more empty stores than I've ever seen before. When I'm driving down the street now, when I drive down the premium end of town and look at the luxury homes, I'm starting to see a lot more homes for sale as interest rates skyrocket. But again, what's normally a huge indicator for the economy is are cars selling? Because if cars are selling quick, well then that means people have a lot of money, maybe they've got a lot of equity in their home to go and buy a new car, or they're feeling very wealthy from the wealth effect of their stocks going up, uh, their assets going up, etc. But if they aren't buying cars, that tells me that something's really wrong. And uh, I've got a report here from CNBC. I'll just bring it up here. Listen to this. Used car prices are falling as sales soften amid high interest rates. So this is happening in the US and this is happening in Australia as well. So let's have a quick look to see how much inventory is here. So as you can see here, everybody, um, cars are full. The car yard is absolutely full. But not only is it full, it is overflowing. We've got the storage here with all the other cars and cars are piling up. I'll zoom here as well. I'm seeing lots of uh, higher end cars now in these car yards as people try to sell these to keep up with their mortgage payments. Now, when I leave, I'll try to get another view of the car yard because it's absolutely massive. Uh, it's the biggest one in my area. So that gives us the big indication of what's really going on. So I'll just read you some data from this report um, from uh, CNBC. So wholesale used vehicle prices reached their lowest levels this year in May. So that tells me the worst isn't over. The Federal Reserve still lifting, the Reserve Bank of Australia still lifting interest rates. Even if they pause at this next meeting in June, the markets are pricing in that they're gonna uh, increase again in July. So we're not out of the woods yet. And remember, all these rate hikes normally have a lag of at least six months. So a sales felt amid high interest rates and inflated retail prices. Again, car prices uh, for new cars have gone up a lot. Used cars went up crazy during 2020 and 2021, and people can't afford it anymore. And now that they're starting to see that car prices are finally starting to fall, we're getting that um, consumer psychology where now they don't FOMO in, you know, worrying if the car price is gonna go up $5,000 next month. Uh, they're knowing bargains are coming ahead, and so they're waiting on the sidelines. Also, um, Cox Automotive reported Wednesday a decline of 2.7% from April to May. That's right, a decline of nearly 3%, just in one month and also year over year they're down as well so uh it's uh manheim used car value index which tracks vehicles sold at the u.s wholesale dealership auctions so again this is at the wholesale level again that's going to flow into retail and uh, when i look at the data for australia because i have a lot of australia viewers as well we are seeing used cars prices start to fall and i think it's even going to hit harder here in australia than the u.s because a lot of people's here's uh, mortgages are variable and even people that fix their rates, they only fix it for two, maximum five years. So once those start to expire, I'm starting to get a lot of stories from friends, family, um, associates that what they're planning to do to try to keep their house and try to keep up with their mortgage payments and keep up with the cost of living is they're going to sell their car. Especially, you know, all these people that unfortunately FOMO'd in and brought a brand new car in 2020 and 2021. They've lost probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars, uh, depending on you know the, how high end the car they brought. But normally, when you drive it off a lot, it loses ten to twenty percent of its value straight away. Um, so they're at a loss there. They're going to have a car loan, but they're going to sell it to try to keep um, you know making ends meet. And it also says here, use retail sales are estimated to have been down eleven percent year over year in May as well. Now another story. Um, for some, you know, boots on the ground reporting. Uh, I had a friend at the gym and he has a 2018 Ford Ute. You know, US, you call it trucks. Um, and what happened is he ordered the latest um, new Ford Ranger range. Um, and what happened is he went to the dealer last year and he was offered 
$54,000 to trade this in to get the price down um, from the brand new Ford Ranger he was going to buy. But he thought, you know what, the car market's pretty good right now. I'll try sell it for $60,000 myself. So he tried to sell it, didn't get any buyers, and he kind of just gave up for it for a little while. So then he went in again this year to try to uh, sell his Ford Ranger. I think it's a wild track. I think that's the, the version uh, he had. I'm not 100% sure, but it was, I know it's a Ford Ranger. And what the dealer offered him, they didn't offer him 53000 They said, we'll give you 40000 for it. And he hasn't done much more kilometers or miles on the car. It's still in great condition. It's been serviced, hasn't been used much since then. But the price has come down $13,000, nearly 30% from what they offered him, you know, during the craziness during 21 and 22. So this is more evidence that the dealers, you know, they look, again, they're flooded with the inventory. If you go to try to trade in your car, try to sell in the used car, um, they're probably not even going to have money to buy it and they're not going to be in a rush to buy it. They're not going to offer you, um, you know, a very good price for it because they're just flooded with inventory here. So again, this is a very good indicator of what's happening out there in the real, real world, especially now that a lot of the data is getting more and more politicized, it's getting more and more political. Um, you know, they keep changing definitions of things like recessions. They keep on changing the way they record inflation. Um, real inflation now, uh, when we look at the way they used to record it in the 80s, we're looking at at least 10%, at least double digits. So we're actually having high inflation, but it's just because they changed the way they record inflation, it doesn't look as bad. And this gives the Fed a get out of jail uh, free card. So that way, if things really hit the fan, they can manipulate the data and say, look, don't worry, actually inflation's going down. When all of you are saying, what's going on? I don't see inflation going down. I'm going to the grocery store. I'm getting my energy bills. Insurance costs are going up. Um, inflation is not going down but they're going to sacrifice the poor and the middle class uh, to keep on bailing out the banks. Now, this is what I'm very worried about people, and this is what maybe investors are hoping for and praying for in the stock market, that the Federal Reserve is gonna start cutting interest rates to save the economy and save the banks. Now, if this happens, we're going to see possibly a market melt up. And like I've talked about during periods of high inflation, stagflation, currency debasement, what I'm doing to hedge against this is buying gold, silver, Bitcoin as well, uh, because that's kind of like financial freedom in a different sense. Not just you have wealth, but you have uh, financial liberty. Um, you don't have your money tracked by a bank. A lot of people think Bitcoin, um, you know, is all tracked by the banks, but you can actually self custody Bitcoin as well as gold and silver. You can hold it physically, you can trade people uh, with gold and silver. You can pay people in gold and silver and not have it tracked by the, you know, the IRS, etc., etc. Not saying to do that, but you know, that's just what I've heard some people have done in the past. So what I think is going to happen, especially if they bring out a central bank digital currency, we're going to have a lot of people like what happened in 1971 when they came off the gold standard. They flooded to gold because they thought this, you know, what this is going to be the end of the dollar. And yes, the dollar didn't go to zero. But we all know since the 1970s, it's lost most of its value. So everyone, go out there in the real world and figure out for yourself if we are in a recession or not. Again, if you're wanting to learn how to build wealth and protect yourself against this downturn that is coming, you can click the link in the description below for my course. But let me know what you guys all think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.